previously on Mercy Point. Dr. Gerardo, have you met the new resident? We've met. We used to know each other. <laughs> Hi. What's going on? Steven's a wonderful guy. I thought you two had a great first date. An even better second one. What's the problem? He asked for a third. But all I want is for you to get on the next transport and go. Volume two decks. Nice place. Ever been there? Last time I was on Earth, about uh, five years ago. When I see you staring like that, it's usually in the other direction, out into the Sahartic. Any special significance to this place that I need to know about? Not anymore. Close picture. We can talk about her, you know. Unless it's classified information. There's nothing to talk about, Kim. It's over. Trust me. Goaling patient in respiratory flux. Help me boost him. It's not ventilating. Hang in there, Shield. I have a sister intake and help you breathe. 20 megs nebulized amulet. 20 megs of nebulized amulet. Respiratory failure. Administering. Wide open. Wide open. 30 megs. 30 megs. You want me to run the trach feed? No. Baton, what do you think? Respiratory failure is only a symptom. His entire metabolic integrity is endangered. Projection. Expiratory function is deteriorating. Estimated decline projected at 14% of current ventilation Yeah, parameter. I got the picture. Thanks. Patan, do you have any ideas how to stimulate cell regen of the ventral sac so we can get his lungs working? What end? Respiratory failure is symptomatic of second stage forax rho in the golding species. There's no reason to give up hope. It just means we have to work a little hard to beat this thing, that's all. Doctor, can I see you outside? What were you thinking? Acute perception is also quite common in this species. He already knows the truth. I don't tolerate fatalism from anyone, especially consulting surgeons. There is a difference between fatalism and realism. I prefer the latter. As soon as you give up hope, so does the patient. I have no objection to hope when appropriate. Jill is slipping. That does not mean we start burying him. The truth remains, there is no cure for his condition. Forax Row is fatal. Yes, well, sometimes the truth is overrated. Dr. Breslauer. Dr. Breslauer, it's Ani. I hope I'm not waking you. Uh, no, um, I was just going over all of yesterday's admissions. What is it, Ani? I think Dr. Maxwell was expecting you to join him on his rounds this morning. Oh, my God. Tell him I'm on my way. <sighs> Dr. Breslauer, were we expecting any VIPs today? 
Not that I'm aware of. Why? Because there's a council shuttle coming in from Calavada that's docking now. Okay, why don't you and Drew go meet them at the launch bay? Doctor. Yes. Drew is supposed to be on rounds with Dr. Maxwell this morning. Supposed to be? Is that your diplomatic way of saying she's late, Ani? Come on, I'll cover it myself. ISC transport passes. How are you doing, son? Okay, I guess. Well, you're about to feel a lot better, I promise. I'm Dr. Halen Breslow. How can I help you? Trevor Kelly, I'd like to see Dr. DeMiller, the chief of staff, if you don't mind. Well, I'm the director of medicine, so if there's a I problem... I really don't I... have time to discuss your resume, Dr. Breslow. My son is not well. He demands immediate attention, and I'm quite sure you don't have the authority to administer the treatment I'm seeking. All right, then. Ani, will you check on Dr. DeMiller's availability? And, Mr. Kelly, if you don't object, I will perform your son's admission exam in order to expedite the process. Fine. Do what you need to. All right, folks. Hey, sorry I'm late. You called a resident because you live here, not because you visit once in a while. If the extra shift is too no, much, please. No, I can handle it, Dr. Maxwell. I mean, Grote, it's not gonna happen again. Okay. Here. What's this? It's my personal records and med files. I know you and Helen are tight, and her opinion of me isn't exactly stellar, so I just, I want you to know what I've done. If it's all the same to you, I prefer forming my own opinions. I am much less interested in your past than I am in your patience. There's a woman in exam three with a pain in her hand. I'd like you to give her a prelim and then report to me before you proceed. And uh, get me the latest research on an alien disease, Forax Row, yeah. ASAP. You got it. Yes, it's true. We've had some encouraging results with Golden Blood. But the tests have all been highly experimental. Any curative properties in living humans is, at this point, theoretical at best. Certainly nothing to support an interspecies blood transfusion. Then I'm bringing you the opportunity to make medical history. Well, surely Mr. Kelly must realize that it's not that simple. I know that you have a golden patient registered here. He's been here for a week, and his condition was downgraded to critical this morning. Patient records are privileged information. My son is dying, Dr. DeMilla. And so far, nobody's been able to treat Clayton's thalonemia because most of them have never even seen a case of it. It's a very rare disease. That's right. So I've decided to better my odds this time. Use some of the privilege that goes with being a new member of the ISC board. Now, you know as well as I do that everybody needs help. Right now, I need yours. But I'm guessing that someday soon, you'll need mine. Tell me, Mr. Kelly. Is that meant as a bribe or a threat? I didn't travel half the galaxy to mince words, Doctor. This is my last resort. I'll do everything in my power to save my son. Sounds like you've got strong hearts. Yeah, you can be straight with me. I know I've got thalonemia. How were you diagnosed, Clayton? He was on Earth. I was skyboarding in. Missed a 360 jump. After the doctors finished checking me out, they found it. But my file reads like a who's who of galactic medicine by now. Are you in any discomfort? Is there something I can get you? Uh, if you could offload the new Eternity Smith game, that would be true. <laughs> yeah, I know. my parents think those games get me too worked up, but it's not like it's gonna kill me, right? I'm sorry to pull you out, but we've been summoned. I'll be right there. No promises. I'll see what I can do. Damilla's called for a meeting of the minds. Do you have any idea what this is about? <laughs> Maybe. As soon as that ISC shuttle came in, I knew it was going to be an interesting day. <laughs> I heard Drew flaked on you this morning. Got her on double shifts, unless you would like to be supervising her now. Just washing your back. You've got to be right. tough with her or she's going to walk all over you. Oh, so this is my back we're concerned about. <clears throat> I'm a flight attendant for Galways. Fortunately, so far, no one has objected to my wearing gloves. Were you born with this condition, Miss Paulette? It's a strange part. It started growing this way only two months ago. 
All I can think is that I travel so much, maybe I contracted some kind of alien disease. Well, that's a, um, that's a possibility. I can guess where this is going. I'm simply asking for your professional opinions as to whether this type of blood transfusion is even theoretically possible in humans. In theory, anything is possible, but you're asking us to consider experimenting on patients. The man sits on the Interspecies Council, Growth. The last time I checked, they designate our funding. You don't think he'd actually use that against us, do you? I don't want to find out. But I do want to know, if we turn him down, that it's for a good and simple reason, such as this procedure will not work. In my opinion, the procedure would be difficult, but theoretically possible. It is also theoretically possible that we risk doing more harm than good. I've always been under the impression that humans had a natural affinity for risk-taking. Yes, well, this is way beyond risk-taking. This is reckless. We don't even have relevant blood capability data with healthy donors. Because the truth is, we're talking about gambling with the lives of two very sick patients. Sometimes the truth is overrated. What do you think, Helen? I think that's right. If we had more to go on here, maybe, but it... Seems like we're just taking a shot in the dark. None of us can guarantee that if we attempt this procedure, we won't end up killing them both for nothing. But your patient is dying anyway. But that doesn't give us the right just to push him along! Yeah. Dr. Breslauer, you have a message. Yes. Dr. Breslauer, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a patient who absolutely insists on seeing you, and I think Ani is running out of nice things to say. That's a first. Excuse me, gentlemen. Please be advised, Mr. Savard. I have exhausted all manner of persuasion. I am now authorized to remove you from that position by whatever means necessary. Passion? I love that in a woman. Not from her, you won't. This is quite a display, Stephen. Muhammad won't come to the mountain. I'll take it from here, honey. Mission accomplished. Thank you, ladies. I was not a meeting, you know. And I've been leaving you messages for days. At least I think that was me. Oh, so you decided to come make a spectacle of yourself. For the right woman, yeah. In a heartbeat. Now, the fact of the matter is the company says I'm due for a routine physical. So, since I happen to be dating this great doctor oh, at Mercy Point. It was all of two dates, Steve. It was three. You just missed the last one. Which was a shame because we had a wonderful time. You want to hear about it? I could have sworn you enjoyed the first two. I did, actually. So? Since you're no longer in a meeting and I need a simple exam. Oh. And you owe me a day. You say we uh, find an empty room and I let you play doctor on me. So, how soon can we start? Here's the situation, Mr. Cubby. Because this procedure could hasten the death of both patients, We've decided that we cannot treat your son unless or until the Golding patient dies first. That species doesn't even hold a seat on the ISC board. Most of them are ice diggers in Europa. If you're suggesting somehow that your son's life is more important than an alien... To me, yes. There's nothing more important than my son's life. You have three sons, Dr. DeMille. Five, nine, and 21 years old. I checked your file. Surely, as a father, you must understand. This is not a question of understanding, Mr. Kelly, or of empathy. It's a question of ethics. And to me, there is nothing more important than that in this hospital. I'm sorry. We can't help you. sounds but sometimes I wish he would go to sleep like that he spends what little energy he has each day just trying to stay positive I know 
my husband's methods can be overbearing. But he hasn't given up hope yet. Which I guess you have to admire. Is Clayton your only child? We have two girls back on Earth. But Clayton, he's our firstborn. My husband never knew his real father. He had nothing until he built a satellite fortune for himself. His dream was to hand it all to Clayton someday. Doctor? How long does Clayton have? Not long. I don't care what you have to do. I want those files transferred to my shuttle system ASAP. Yes, Mr. Kelly, they will be there immediately. Hey, uh, West Husing. You ever seen an elch? Flash froze fresh from a drillman's leg. <gasps> Careful, man, it's dormant, not dead. No, well, thanks, no, man. No, no, no. I just ate. You look like hell. What's with the jacket over the M suit? Can we, um,. Can we talk in private? Yeah, I'm on my way to the cargo hold. Send this little critter back to Gamma Mead 9. Did you get the files I left for you? Yeah, thanks. From what I saw, there's no cure for 4-Extra, is there? No treatment either. You need me for something? Yeah, I finished the prelim exam on the flight attendant. She thought she contracted some kind of alien disease, but all the screening tests came up negative. So I started thinking maybe it's a genetic defect, but her history shows no gene manipulation, so I'm kind of stumped. When you look at this, what do you see? Metacarpals are enlarged bilaterally. So a genetic defect was the right call. If you go with her instincts, what's next? I order a gene map for her. And? I might have to go back a few generations to find the alteration. Should I check in with you if I find a... If it comes up positive, don't fuss with it, fix it. Okay. Got a minute, Doctor? Mr. Kelly. I know you're very busy. I'll cut right to it. You spent the better part of four years on Mercy Point now. Mm -hmm. With the supplemental pay plan you're on, you've got quite a stack of Earth points piling up. Oh, I see. So it was my files that you were digging up. Look, I'm not here to make trouble. I just couldn't help but notice that in about four years, you will have earned yourself the right to live on Earth. Have you ever been there, Dr. Maxwell? No, I haven't. Why? It's the crown jewel of the galaxy. Well, there's no finer place to raise a family. It is your plan, isn't it? Settle down, have some kids. Mr. Kelly, I really am sorry about your son, and I know what this means to you. One call, doctor. I can turn the four years into two. What does that mean to you? So, by the time I realized she was an E-300 pleasure drone, we were already horizontal. You remember the details. That's more than usual for you. Come on, man. This is serious. You're the only one that can come to on this. Believe me, I'm all ears. So, last night, there we are, and <laughs> it was great. But right when I'm about to you know, seal the deal, wham! My whole body goes numb. Turns out, she has some kind of electrical short or something. You're kidding me. No. And, and the worst part of it is, um, I can't, um, I can't get it down. <laughs> you think I should have accepted his offer? No. But in light of the chance for the Kelly boy, I do think you ought to take a more realistic look at your patient. And I'm sick of this altogether. I mean, why are we bending over backwards to save a human life at the cost of an alien life? That's not the point, Grub. Yes, it is. You cannot do anything more for Jill. And that is what is tearing at you, isn't it? 
I've lost my share of patience before, Harris. We all have. It doesn't make it any easier. But you cannot make an honest decision about this procedure or even really help your patient until you're ready to face that. Can you? So what's the verdict, Helen? Do I get to see you again in some place other than Mercy Point? We'll have to put that on hold, I'm afraid. Stephen, blood work is showing only signs of HS syndrome. HS? I may be lovesick, but homesick? I ran the test twice to be sure. See the irregular aggregations of your blood cells? That's the way it usually begins. But I've only been out a little over two years. Yeah, well, homesickness syndrome is something completely unique to each person. All we know is that it's an environmental withdrawal for people born on Earth like us. We need to get back there as soon as possible, Stephen. And if I don't? First, you'll begin to lose muscle control, and then your hands will start to tremble until it spreads throughout your entire body and seizures start. After that, dementia sets in, and if you wait too long, it can be fatal. But a couple of months back on Earth, and I'm fine, right? It's the only care we know right now. Well, there's a company transport leaving in a few days. Is that soon enough? Yeah. Sure you're not saying this just to get rid of me? Stand. Okay, okay. So plan B. If I have to go back, why don't you come with me? <laughs> now who's joking? I'm serious. A couple of weeks in a rainforest somewhere, separate rooms if you want. No obligations. Just to see if there's any fire under all that smoke that's between us. You can't tell me you're not at least tempted. Hey, look, I'm the one that skipped out on our third date, remember? You're forgiven. Look, I can't get a shuttle back to the rest board for a couple of hours anyways. So just tell me you'll think about it. And give me your answer then. Hmm? That's all I'm asking. What do we got? Sandra Harden, 16, spaceborne. HR's 160 BP, 70 over 30. Hypoglycemic coma. We were in the mall zone and she just fainted. I, I didn't know what to do. Has your donor ever been tested for gluconia? I don't think so, no. She's seizing. Oh my god. All right, let's hold her down, keep her moving into trauma, and then we're gonna give her 50 megs of comazine to level off her glucose. Honey? Honey. Got it, 50 comazine. What's wrong? Sandra? Molly, talk to her, please. Uh, it's all right, Mrs. Harden. You've just gotta stabilize your daughter's blood sugar and the seizure will pass, really. She'll be fine. So now, why don't you just come with me and we'll take care of the registration. Date. But that other nurse seems so upset. Oh, no, she's just a little concerned. That's all, she'll be fine. He's already in the third stage. Hippocrates can give you the details of his decline. No, thanks. I'm wrestling with the idea of this transfusion. You know my opinion. But he's your patient. Perhaps if you could explain your refusal. My mom caught a virus from aliens, and my father blamed them for her death. A couple of years later, I'm working in a gas mine with him, and this crutch falls into a sifter, and I dive in after it. My dad went crazy. He said that I was a fool to risk my life for an alien. He, uh... He hasn't spoken to me since. So now Clayton's father asks you to risk Jeel for the sake of his son. And being human, you resent it? Maybe. I know how strongly you feel about protecting other species, Dr. Maxwell. But I would ask that you give us the same respect you seem to have wanted from your father. It may be your decision, but it's not your life. Why not let Jill decide?
Sebastian. I have stopped dreaming. Chill. I know I promised that I wouldn't stop hoping, but our knowledge of Forex Road is still not what it should be. It's spreading out from your lungs, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. I'm sorry. I can make sure that the pain in the uh, final stages is minimal. But... There is no need to apologize, Dr. Maxwell. Your efforts on my behalf were clear even without your words and I thank you for them and for your hope we have a patient a young boy with thalonemia there's a chance that a transfusion with your blood may help him my blood for a human boy? It's an experiment. It might even reduce what little time you have left, so if you don't want to do it, I won't ask you again. And, and, and there is some hope for him? Son, maybe. Yes. Then, it would be an honor to be a part this experiment, Dr. Maxwell. So, what happens next? In simple terms, we pump your blood through a synthetic ventricle, cooling it to 68 degrees. My body temperature. That's right. Then we do the same thing again through another ventricle, raising your blood temperature to 98.6. Then we extract the plasma elements, process them, and cross transfuse. Sounds simple enough. You have the tough job. Believe me. Okay. You guys ready? Stephen. My offer was just too good to pass up, right? I thought I'd come in first and I'm not. Leave me hanging like that. See, I knew you had a heart. <laughs> Look, I really did enjoy our time together, and I'm flattered by your invitation, but my life's just a little too complicated right now to take that kind of time off work. And the truth is, there's someone else. I already guessed as much. Well, you can't hate a guy for trying, right? You take care of yourself. Stephen, just because I won't go with you doesn't mean there's somebody else. Come on, on the two dates we had, how many times did the name Grote come up? Grote? We're just friends. <laughs> Call it what you like. Just tell him from me how lucky he is. By him. Probably my imagination, but I feel colder. Do you feel any different, Jill? Some of the pain is gone. But I feel tired. How long have you been sick, Jill? Three weeks. Yeah, my one year anniversary is coming up next week. a job, Jim? The Golan don't have jobs. We have callings. Mine was history. You taught it? I remember our history. 
history for everyone. I tell stories. That sounds like a great job. I mean, Colleen. Yeah. If this experiment actually works and my dad doesn't make me run this company, I was thinking I might become a writer. That too is a worthy calling. What would you write about? It's a great thing about writing. Anything's possible. It doesn't matter if you're sick. Whatever you imagine, that's what happens. Maybe I could write about you. So, it turns out that your great-great-grandmother used gene manipulation to correct a severe arthritis problem. Bacterial rinse. It's a very common practice last century. My mother never got this. Yeah. Well, early gene manipulation relied on the OGOD theory. That's one gene, one disorder. And we now know it's far more complex than that. But the result was when one problem was fixed, another appeared, skipping several generations. You see, with the onset of arthritis, most people produce an excess of synovial fluid. And with you, the synovial tissue itself began multiplying, fusing the skin. Does this mean that my granddaughter will have this too? No. We can retroactively correct small mutations like that in less than an hour. You'll probably need uh, one more surgical derm cleave in about a month. And if you'd like, I can do it myself. Dr. Maxwell, we have a problem. You gotta reduce outflow. He's losing autonomic tone. What's wrong? What's going on? His platelets aren't binding. Flow decreased by 20%. Ventricle reserve is at less than half capacity. Should I reduce GEL as well? No. What are you doing? What about plate? He's experiencing metabolic decline. GEL's rate's improving. What are you doing? This defies all logic. His vascular perfusion is dropping. It would seem that his immune system has rejected the new plasma. Are you saying that this transfusion isn't working? Not for your son. Working for Gia. Stop this thing. Stop it right now. It's not that simple. The hell it isn't. Just turn off the lousy machine. We've already suspended the procedure, which gives us a window of about 10 minutes at best to decide what to do. Now, I'm telling you right now that if we disconnect entirely, they both die. I don't care. I started this damn thing. I can stop it. You're out of line, Mr. Kelly. There's another life at stake here now. Your own private crusade is no longer relevant. Look, I was against this thing from the beginning until I, I realized it really... It really is not my decision. What are you talking about? It's your son's life, Mr. Kelly. Let him decide. Yo, Siege. That uh, anticoagulant you gave me really did a trick. Excellent. You know, because... Plan B was draining the blood with a large bore needle, and that's... Not in this lifetime. You know, I did have to get that treatment approved, though, so... How's it hanging, Mr. Jesse? There is nothing to discuss, Clay. If I let this continue, you will die. Dad, I'm dying anyways. I've been dying for the last five months. So now you just want to give up on me? That's enough, Trevor. This is his life we're talking about, Faye. Stop it, Dad. you anymore. You listen to me, Clay. We're in this together. We will find another alternative, I promise you. No. You gotta face it. It's all you've got. You can't do a thing to change what's happening now. He's right, Trevor. Faye. No. 
just listen to him. Please. Dad, you've had, you've had an amazing life. If somehow I could live up to that, I'm never gonna have the chance to. But there is, there's one thing left for me to do. Something important. I don't want to save you. I'll tell the doctors. We're ready to continue. Talk to you for a minute, Dr. Gerardo. So, was that idle curiosity, or are you checking up on me too now? That thought never even crossed my mind. Really? Because I got out of rehab a long time ago, CJ, and I don't need you and Helen circling me like vultures just waiting for me to fail. All right, look, I can't speak for Helen. But I've never been about watching you or anyone else fail. Well, then what were you looking for? Thought I saw somebody I used to know. That's all. Transfusion is 95% complete. Your son is very brave. Well, you're in a good mood. Get a call off station? Yes, I did. I thought you were at the Pleiades base until tomorrow. General's still not happy with the arrangement DeMille is proposing, so I get to play peacemaker. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't stay. We could share a bite. Something's wrong. I want the truth about you and Drew, CJ. It's pretty clear from this morning that she was on your mind. That is not how it is, believe me. All right, well, then tell me how it is. It's over. End of story. Then it shouldn't be a problem to talk about it, right? Right. And if you want all the gory details, you got it. But let me tell you something. Drew Breslauer is absolutely the last thing on my mind. 
especially when you're around. Okay. Then when you get back from this run, give me a call. We'll make a date. To talk. Dr. Maxwell said you wanted to see us. Please, closer. I have many kind words in my head. The most important are thank you for being good parents, for believing in this experiment, for letting Clayton save my life. Here is what I can give you in return. I will tell Clayton's story to the Golem. I will tell how one brave father fought for his son's right to live and how that son earned the right to live forever in our history. That is the best ending I could write for him. Demel's already gone. Some kind of problem at home with his son. Um, you mind if... <sighs> Grout, I'm... I'm sorry about Clayton. At least he got to go on his own terms. You know, if I had stuck to my guns and stopped that transfusion, my patient would not have been cured. I was wrong. Hey, nobody knew what was gonna happen in there. And sometimes it takes more guts to change your mind than to hold your ground, you know? And the fact is, you went for it, and because of that, your patient is alive now. You know what I need? I need a drink. I need a drink and a solid meal. I have had nothing but junk food all day. Hungry? Oh, uh, I just ate, but... Uh, Not a problem. Another just, time. It's just that I've got to respond to this Pleiades space letter for Damilla, uh, but sometime soon, okay? You got it. Okay. Just don't work so hard. <laughs> 